argument. Deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning. Laws of thoughts, law of identity, law of contradiction, and law of excluded middle term. The three types of words. Four types of terms. The universe of discourse. Synthetic and analytic propositions. Logic by K.T. Basantani. In logic, an argument is a set of statements or propositions consisting of one or more premises and a conclusion. The premises are intended to provide evidence or support for the conclusion, and the argument is considered valid if the conclusion logically follows from the premises. In other words, an argument is a series of statements that are intended to convince someone of a particular conclusion. The premises are the reasons or evidence given to support the conclusion, and the conclusion is the claim that is being argued for. It's important to note that not all arguments are valid. An argument can be invalid if the conclusion does not logically follow from the premises, even if the premises themselves are true. Therefore, in logic, it is not only important to evaluate the truth of the premises, but also the validity of the argument. Deductive reasoning and argument. Deductive reasoning is a type of reasoning that starts with general principles or premises and uses them to arrive at a specific conclusion. In a deductive argument, the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises. In other words, if the premises are true, the conclusion must also be true. Example, premise 1, all men are mortal. Premise 2, Socrates is a man. Conclusion, therefore, Socrates is mortal. In this example, the conclusion follows necessarily from the premises, and the argument is deductively valid. Inductive reasoning and argument. Inductive reasoning is a type of reasoning that starts with specific observations or examples and uses them to arrive at a general principle or conclusion. In an inductive argument, the conclusion is not necessarily true, even if the premises are true. Instead, the conclusion is probable or likely based on the evidence provided. Example, premise 1, every time I have eaten at that restaurant, the food has been delicious. Premise 2, my friends have also reported having delicious meals at that restaurant. Conclusion, therefore, it is likely that the food at that restaurant is always delicious. In this example, the conclusion is not necessarily true, but it is probable based on the evidence provided. The argument is inductively strong because the premises provide strong evidence in support of the conclusion. It is important to note that inductive arguments are never deductively valid. However, they can still be strong or weak based on the quality of the evidence provided. Additionally, it is always possible that new evidence could be discovered that would change the probability of the conclusion. Laws of thoughts. Law of identity, law of contradiction, and law of excluded middle term are fundamental laws in logic that are important for understanding the principles of logical reasoning. Here is a brief explanation of each law, law of identity. The law of identity states that every entity is identical to itself. In other words, if A is equal to A, then it cannot be equal to anything else. Symbolically, the law of identity can be represented as A equals A. Example, the statement the cat is a cat represents the law of identity. Law of contradiction. The law of contradiction states that a proposition cannot be both true and false at the same time and in the same sense. In other words, if a statement is true, then its negation must be false. Symbolically, the law of contradiction can be represented as A and A. Example, the statement the cat is on the mat cannot be both true and false at the same time. Law of excluded middle term. The law of excluded middle term states that a proposition must either be true or false. In other words, there is no middle ground between truth and falsehood. Symbolically, the law of excluded middle term can be represented as A or A. Example, the statement the cat is either on the mat or not on the mat represents the law of excluded middle term. The three types of words you are referring to are from traditional logic and philosophy, and they are Categorimatic words. 
These are words that can function as terms in a proposition and have meaning on their own, such as nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. For example, in the sentence, the cat sat on the mat, cat, sat, and mat are categorimatic words. Syncategorimatic words. These are words that cannot function as terms on their own, but are used to modify or connect categorimatic words. Examples of syncategorimatic words include prepositions, conjunctions, and articles. For instance, in the sentence, the cat sat on the mat, the and on are syncategorimatic words. A categorimatic words, these are words that have no independent meaning and can only be used as part of a larger expression. Examples of a categorimatic words include logical connectives such as and, or, and not, as well as quantifiers like all and some. These words are important for constructing logical propositions and making logical inferences. In tra traditional logic and philosophy, the following are four types of terms, singular terms. These are terms that refer to a specific individual, such as proper names and definite descriptions. For example, John and the President of the United States are singular terms. General terms. These are terms that refer to a class of individuals or a category, such as dog or mammal. Positive terms. These are terms that attribute some property to the subject of the term, such as red or tall. Negative terms. These are terms that deny some property of the subject of the term, such as not red or not tall. In logic and philosophy, the universe of discourse refers to the collection of objects, individuals, or entities that a particular statement or argument is concerned with. It is the set of things that are being referred to, talked about, or considered within a particular context. The universe of discourse is usually defined explicitly at the beginning of an argument or discussion, and it can vary depending on the context or domain of inquiry. For example, in a discussion about biology, the universe of discourse might be all living organisms, while in a discussion about art, the universe of discourse might be all works of art. The universe of discourse is important because it helps to define the scope and limits of a particular argument or statement. It also helps to ensure that the terms being used are meaningful and coherent within the context of the discussion. By explicitly defining the universe of discourse, we can avoid ambiguity and confusion about what we are talking about and what kinds of claims we can make. In philosophy and logic, Synthetic and analytic propositions are two types of statements that have different characteristics and meanings. Synthetic propositions. These are statements that add something to our understanding of the world by combining subject and predicate in a way that is not self-evident or logically necessary. In other words, a synthetic proposition is true or false based on whether the subject and predicate actually correspond in reality. For example, the cat is on the mat is a synthetic proposition because it tells us something new about the world and requires empirical evidence to confirm or deny its truth. Analytic propositions. These are statements that are true by definition or by logical necessity, based solely on the meanings of the terms involved. In other words, an analytic proposition is true or false based on the meaning of its terms and does not require empirical evidence or observation. For example, all bachelors are unmarried is an analytic proposition because the concept of bachelorhood is defined as being unmarried, and thus the proposition is true by definition. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Do join my telegram channel for notes and PDFs. Law underscore with underscore John B.